today we are going to see something about indirect communication i believe you would have heard something about indirect communication if not then is it's okay no problem the one thing that you have to understand is uh, the communication is not direct if the communication is not direct then it means you are having some kind of intermediary in between the two parties who are communicating suppose there is a party a and a party b party a means uh, it might be a process or an object this process a wants to communicate to process b now when it was a direct communication we have already studied we will have to make a socket and these kind of tcp connections or those uh, other things maybe we will also um, if we want to execute some of the functions on the destination then it may be a remote procedure call or a uh, remote method invocation now we are trying to see something about indirect communication that sometimes uh, while designing your distributed system you may also require uh, something like this so you should keep these things in mind that uh, one thing is indirect communication where while communication you may have an intermediary okay it may you may call it a c so no direct messages are being sent from a to b a message is being sent to c and then c delivers that message to b so this is the uh, thing that we have to understand this is indirect communication where the communication is not direct very simple to understand definitely in uh, um, indirect communication we will have to see some concentrated things that uh, what really is happening so we will go through these things you may have uh, heard uh, group communication we will see these things uh, what happened in group communication that uh, you sent a message to a particular group and whoever are the members of the group okay you sent a message to a group and whoever are the members of the group they all will get this particular message right so several times it may you may encounter that uh, there is benefits of such group uh, messages okay i should say group communication before going for that uh, group communication let us think about your indirect communication if you will uh, be asked to define this indirect communication so the one thing that you have to introduce is intermediary okay so it can be defined as it is defined as communication between entities in a distributed system through an through an intermediary okay there is no direct coupling you know between the sender and the receiver let me write it uh, uh, there is a communication between uh, entities through an intermediary with no direct coupling between sender and the receiver i should say one or more receivers hmm.
ओके सो वन थिंग दैट वी हैव अंडर स्टूल दैट देर विल ऑलवेज बी ए इंटरमीडिएट डेफिनेटली फ्रॉम अप्रोच टू अप्रोच द रोल द वे दिस इंटरमीडिएट एक्ट्स दे मे डिफर ओके सो इट विल डेफिनेटली डिपेंड ऑन योर अप्रोच दैट यू आर यूजिंग इन दिस हियर एक्चुअली दिस वीडियो we are just thinking about these approaches only okay now uh, if i have to tell you something about uh, um, coupling you understand uh, um, you create a socket between uh, uh one uh, i should say the sender to the receiver and you couple these two now here we are saying we will not have a direct coupling so whenever uh, it will be it will be through a intermediary so till now what we have seen in rpc or um, remote method invocation or any other we have seen that there have been a, a direct coupling we we know the address of the um, receiver and then we made a connection to it um, on our own we didn't require a third party we didn't require a intermediary so also okay uh, let me give one example that if you are having a client server system where uh, you will have a client and a server client and a server you want to have a communication there may be multiple clients who want to use this server now if this server breaks if the server crashes in that case what will happen these services will not be given to the client since the clients were having the address of the server okay even if a new server is started here this client should be aware of the new address right however if we would have been using a third party in between where all the request would come and then this particular um, it says this to the server in that case if the server changes only modification that will be required is at this particular intermediary so there will always be some benefits with some um, limitations let it be so here we are getting this kind of benefit if we want to use such uh, benefit okay now when we talk about this intermediary we think about uh, the coupling and this coupling can be varying in, in between the way it gives uh, a space coupling as well as time coupling okay let me talk about uh, space coupling and time coupling so what happens in a space coupling here actually whatever this sender is they does not know the identity of the receiver why because there is a um, intermediary and also these receivers do not know the address of the um, sender uh, okay this is uh, a story of uh, uncoupling in coupling actually they are tightly coupled they know the address of each other so that they can send it so if they are uh, uncoupled in that case they will have to go through uh, this thing let me write it a space uncoupling here we are talking about so in a space uncoupling what happens sender and receiver
are unaware of uh, each other's identity. each other's identity. So, when you will have a space uncoupling, so then what will happen? Mm. Sender and receivers are unaware of the uh, addresses of each other. So, they will have to use a third party. Now, when we talk about time uncoupling, so what happens in time in uh, time uncoupling? So, what they are saying is, uh, uh, when the message is being uh, sent or received, means being transmitted, at that time both the sender and receiver need not be present and uh, they can come at their own convenient time. So, here what happens in time uncoupling sender and receiver ok actually it is other way around uh, R E C E I let me write it. Sender and receiver can have independent lifetimes. What does it mean? And uh, they both need not be live, the sender and the receiver need not be live at the time of communication. Okay? Sender may, whenever it has a message, it can send and went idle. <coughs> and whenever the receiver gets time, it can come and check its message. So, for that, you will need an intermediary. So, this can be very helpful in such case where um, the systems are uh, very, um, I should say volatile. Volatile environment is such where the sender and receivers may come and go like uh, the internet connections are uh, poor. So, maybe uh, they can come at a particular time and within a few time they may leave. So, because of that they should not uh, they should not uh, lose any information. So, let us have a third party, let us have a intermediary like a Google Classroom. We will uh, share all the things uh, related talks in Google Classroom. So, whenever students are uh, may have time, they may come and they can see the uh, information or uh, the lecture. Anna? So, that is especially time uncoupling. So, my question is, is it clear about uh, uh, time uncoupling and space uncoupling? So, the question is, what is the difference between time uncoupling and asynchronous communication? Let me uh, repeat here uh, the difference between time uncoupling and asynchronous communication. So, in asynchronous communication, what happens? We uh, the sender sends a message and does not wait for acknowledgement and it can send the next message. That is uh, talking about only uh, sending messages here. In time uncoupling, what they are saying that we are talking about lifetime. 
that when the receivers are sender uh, they are definitely as the word you used to online so they are live let me use the word live that when the sender and receiver are live now time uncoupling says that sender and receiver need not be present uh, at the same time so the difference is from uh, uh, asynchronous communication that in asynchronous communication however we are not waiting for the acknowledgement still the sender and receiver need to be present online or live at the time of communication however when we talk about time uncoupling we are talking about the uh, independence of sender and receiver for sending and receiving the messages sender can send a message on a particular time and receiver can receive on any other time message will not be lost however if we are talking about only asynchronous communication and both the sender and receiver are not present then if the sender sends a message even though the acknowledgement doesn't come if the receiver is not present online or live in that case the message the chances are the message will be lost because there is no intermediary if there is no intermediary then the information or the message that has been sent from the sender there is no place to remain stored for the receiver so receiver has to be live to access the information even though the communication is asynchronous but when we are talking about time uncoupling in that case we want such a system in which the receivers and uh, sender need not be present at the same time to receive the message and the message remains stored message doesn't get lost so uh, that is what we uh, clarified here now i believe uh, we can see some more thing about uh, systems or the properties of systems in which uh, they are space coupled or space uncoupled time coupled or time uncoupled right let me uh, write it like this if a system is space coupled as well as time coupled hmm. so what happens it is a space coupled means it knows the addresses of each other time coupled means both of them are present at the same time so in that case there will be direct communication right there will be direct communication hello for example uh, you may have a message passing or your rmi you have seen okay remote method invocation or rpc whatever you know rpc rmi those are all the thing that we have seen they all are time coupled as well as space coupled now if i say there can be a distributed system in which it may be a space coupled where we are aware of the address however it may be time uncoupled okay so in this case what can happen in this case there will be a communication
okay this communication actually is directed towards the receiver uh, directed towards receiver however the sender and receivers have independent lifetime you know so you will see uh, this thing we have to uh, see also it will be you will see this in publish subscribe system so what happens sender publishes it and you will always need a intermediary however hmm. and the receiver can come but if at all they are aware of the uh, receiver's address that is only the thing now le let me talk about a system where they are a space uncoupled and time coupled what can be as it was ip multicast and uh, they are unaware of the system so uh, what happens here sender does not uh, uh, know the identity you uh, know of the receiver sender does not know the identity of receiver however what about uh, the presence at the same time they all should be sender and receivers must exist at the same moment of time hai na what happens these receivers it should be ei receivers should not must be present must exist at that moment of time okay such examples can be ip multicast you know now now let us talk about a system where it is okay time uncoupled ha uh, theek hai it is a space uncoupled as well as time uncoupled so what will happen in this case sender does not know the uh, identity of receiver and also the sender and receivers are uh, coming at different time so sender let me write it sender is unaware of sender is unaware of identity of receiver also they have different i should say independent lifetime okay so there can be several examples like uh, group communication ha huh. uh, group communication okay you need not be aware of the address you will send a message like in uh, whatsapp or something like this and what happens uh whenever this receiver may come and they can see the message this intermediary will have to maintain this information with itself maybe this is case of whatsapp or not 
let it be but uh, for group communication this is the case where the sender and receivers uh, need not be aware of themselves uh, yeah them or uh, means uh, need not be aware of each other however uh, they need not be present at the same time of communication okay they may come at different times so that was the relationship uh, between a space coupled and time coupled space uncoupled and time uncoupled systems anything you want to ask till now so basically in uh, group communication what happens you will have a group of processes okay definitely uh, i will tell you that uh, it can be a group of objects as well so many a times uh, let us understand it will, it will be a group of processes what happens your uh, processes are there which are running maybe on a single node or same node or a different node so these processes are there they need to communicate with each other mm -hmm. now if in your distributed system because of any reason for certain communications among certain processes you need certain system which is to be a space uncoupled and time uncoupled then you can go for group communication they can then you can go for implementing this group communication among these nodes or among these processes so what happens there are certain uh, members of the group they can join or leave the groups now those members of the group okay maybe the member or not we will talk about it some process can send to all the group members can send certain message to all the group members and whenever uh, these group members according to their uh, availability of time they can come and they can um, receive the message in a way you understand that there is no guarantee of receiving of the message within a particular time limit however you also understand that there is a guarantee of receiving the message maybe not within this time but maybe a, a certain longer time okay so that is a good thing with group communication that uh, when the messages are not that important when it is not that important that we want to result within a few seconds within just now then in that case we can send a message and keep it uh, available for the receivers one thing also uh, it is there which uh, just now came in mind uh, it was uh, Mm. Okay, I told you about uh, mm, the the messages. Okay, there will be a guarantee of delivery, and uh, one more thing, I it just came in my mind. You can also uh, mm, think about some benefits of this uh, group communication. Can you? give something uh, some uh, benefits of this uh, group communication you have just to understand that uh, there is uh, mm, no space coupling and no time coupling that means uh, mm, we are unaware of the addresses and entity of the receivers and also uh, the receivers can come at their own time whenever they have time they can come hmm okay let me write it a little bit we are talking about group communication
so very simple thing it is a space uncoupled as well as it is time uncoupled because of this whatever the um, things happens you already understand now if i uh, tell you about the group it can be a process group or it can be a object group no problem whatever the group they are we need to implement it that's it so when there are processes these processes will be member of a certain group there will be a certain way certain uh, method through which they can be a, they can join a group and they can leave a group so there will be a member of a group a sender may send to all the members of the group similarly there will be objects who can form a group the same thing is there that there will be a certain method using which they can join the group or they can leave a group accordingly they can operate uh, on it some objects may send a message to all of them uh, maybe within um, this group also some object can send message to all of them now uh, what uh, you can understand from here that uh, what is the possibility only the group members can send a message to other group members or a outsider can send a message to all of them what is the possibility what do you think can somebody uh, guess it uh, sir i think only group members can communicate with each other okay so this is actually a property of your group okay so what happens what i am actually trying to say is uh, we can keep these kind of properties of our group according to our implementation so these both the possibilities are there with our um, distributed system so we can have a closed group or a open group so in a closed group what will have what will happen only the group members can send the message to the all the group members in that case this sender will also receive the message however there is a possibility where an outsider can send a message to the group members that is the thing uh, in open group or a closed group there can be let me tell you overlapping and non overlapping groups okay so what happens in overlapping the members of the group okay <coughs> these members may be <coughs> participant of other group also this is group 1 this is group 2 so they, this is called overlapping of the groups you know overlapping groups means g1 and g2 suppose these are the members which are in group g1 also and g2 also you know they are the members of multiple groups however in non overlapping what will happen the members can be in one particular group only they cannot be in two groups so whatever the groups we have there will be different members in these groups that is non overlapping so this kind of uh, uh, things we have to keep in mind uh, we also understand uh, that uh, um, 
there is a group you want to send the message so we will have to keep track of order in which the messages are being sent for that purpose we will also have to keep track of the time at which it was sent so these are the few things that we have to keep in mind if you want to have an order like um, first in first out those which came first um, according to that particular ordering can be there other kind of uh, ordering is there like uh, casual ordering okay there will be a uh, casual relationship between the messages means uh, there is not a uh, we need not preserve the actual order in which depending on the time that it uh, has sent however we can have a casual relationship that this event took place before that particular event so uh, time doesn't matter just this event is before that event then it is okay okay that kind of ordering is also uh, okay so other thing is a total ordering is also possible in which uh, if a message is delivered before another message in one process then the same order should be followed for uh, all the uh, remaining processes i know that is the thing okay so there are certain more things uh, and uh, then we have to see uh, there is something called publish subscribe system you will see how it is um, related to uh, how it is useful in distributed system okay uh, one more thing if i have to tell you about uh, this thing is uh, the group membership management okay so what happens in group membership that we have to give an interface for uh, managing this group membership where uh, they can um, means they can add uh, itself to the group or they can means they can join or leave the group you know they can join or leave the group right there should be a mechanism for uh, failure detection okay okay that uh, that some of the members have crashed or they are unreachable because of any kind of failures so they can mark it and uh, say that uh, there is a little suspense what is the reason and this can be um, sent later this kind of things can be done now if uh, there are certain kind of changes in group membership they can be that can be notified so notifying change in group membership okay so this kind of things we have to take care of in a group membership so this was all about uh, group communication i believe uh, now uh, the next thing we will see will be um, publish subscribe systems and then okay so any question till now